I was so fortunate uh, to receive this wonderful scholarship in the year 2011. And uh, my kind of title of the study was to look at uh, racialized, meaning self-identify those who are not white, uh, those who are Asian descent, Afro-American and Aboriginal descent women who are ordained in the United Church of Canada. Partly because, uh, you know, United Church has been so prominent and pioneering uh, work in women's ordination and uh, but, you know, like 80-some years ago, Lydia was uh, ordained, you know, it was all European descent. And ever since, I just was curious, as a racialized woman ordained minister myself, how so-called gender and race and ethnicities are played into this very special call of ordained ministry within the United Church. So that's why I was curious and maybe um, to look around and who are they and how their ministries has been shaped and informed by uh, their multiple identities. So first of all, I found that there was no data of those who are self-identified racialized women ordained ministers. Um, so I had to work hard to find who where and uh, how many and who they are. I believe that we still don't have those lists, which is, I think, is unfortunate and something maybe we should uh, get the data because uh, on, on one hand, we need a confidentiality, but on the other hand, knowing those multiple identities will help their ministries and support their struggles as well as, um, you know, encouraging their joys and success. Um, so, with uh, several help, you know, from you know, church in mission and, and other units, ethnic ministry folks, um, I was able to gather 19 women who are uh, self-identified as racialized women uh, in the ordained um, stream, and I was able also to not only um, ministers who are currently serving and working in a parish and other congregational basis uh, work, but who have worked and made a huge contribution and but now retired, as well as who are in theological schools uh, being trained to be ordained ministers. So in a way, I, though 19 uh, numbers do not sound very big, I see kind of trends of the past and the present and the future of these uh, special uh, people in our church as, as leaders and as servants. I had kind of um, about 20 different questions and it was a kind of qualitative research method I was using, meaning I directly meet with them and I hired a research assistant to go and worship and visit their church and, and did an interview. So interviewing and hearing their story as, as a direct kind of primary document, living document and oral stories were part of the method I'm using. Uh, I was able to have about 10 themes that were concurring. And one of the themes was, uh, how, how did they prepare themselves to be a minister? So theological education was a huge piece. And one of the kind of their particular uh, vocational identity and role to play in this church was shaped uh, and challenged by the theological education. So those are the one major uh, findings that uh, education was an important issue. But there are lots of hurdles to go through. So the candidacy process and internship experiences were interesting and, and intriguing as well as challenging. Um, other issues, as I said earlier, you know, the no one is existing in a vacuum. So everybody brings their particular you know, background and histories and, and, and identities. And I was going to look at how, say, migration shaped their understanding of who they are as ministers and Christians and what are their roles. You know, even though they are born in, in Canada, 
but some of them were recent immigrants. And so those immigration story was really, really interesting. Um, and uh, other things like uh, race issue was huge uh, because they, they are, although a few Aboriginal um, uh, participants were so-called past white, so it wouldn't be known un unless they self-identified, right? But then still the racism issue was uh, huge in our church and in society. So there was a hard finding, but I think it's important to know as a church. Um, also, not only just gender as a separate matter compared to class and sexuality, those are really interconnected issue. So I think this finding helped people to learn and look at the issues, not in isolation, but connecting it. So in scholarly work, we say intersectionality, and so learning from poverty issue in relation to race, learning racism issue in relation to sexism, you know, things like that. So uh, those uh, themes were emerging. And, uh, but the most interesting and hopeful uh, and surprising findings to me was because of their marginal status in the church, right? As a audience dreams, women are still, you know, maybe half and half, but as a racialized women, they are very minority. And so they have marginal status, uh, but then their roles and their passion, their compassion, commitment, commitment to, to building up, nurturing and cultivating leadership among themselves as well as people were so overwhelmingly positive. So that kind of sign of hopes in spite of their challenges due to their identities were really uh, amazing. Um, maybe another, another one is that they're, um, this is an interesting, I think as a woman, another finding was, you know, so-called clothing. Uh, alb, um, you know, wear, wearing alb or not, wearing stole or not as a minister, itself was an interesting uh, story to tell. Um, some chose not to wear, some chose to wear. Um, and the dynamics of wearing and not wearing was an interesting thought because we all kind of realized this is quite women's issue. So in other words, I wear this kind of earrings and people make a comment on it. But if, say, a male minister wearing a different shoes, people wouldn't recognize this. So it, it, it's on the radar of women uh, ministers, whether they wear or not, whether they make up or not, whether they um, have a different cultural clothing or not. So that itself, I think, shapes and informs their identity as a minister and as a woman minister and as a racialized woman minister. So those are uh, really, you know, interesting. And, and as a liturgical theologian, I think there are further work to be um, done around that areas.